As an older wrestling fan, I still look for those glimmers of hope. I still look for those moments where I can point to wrestling and say, yeah, man, that's why I became a wrestling fan all those many, many moons ago as a little child. That's why I've stayed a wrestling fan all these years. That's why I can't give up on this. That's why I can't look past this. That's why I can't let the shit go. Because of things like this, because of this, because of that. And while those things are more fleeting and infrequent as they ever have been when it comes to professional wrestling, you still get those every once in a while. However, a far more frequent occurrence that you see develop is you get a reminder of just how sad and pathetic professional wrestling can be and how so often the actual product itself, the wrestlers, the promotions, the shows, the matches are so boring and so uninteresting that fans, wrestling media, social media has to find other things to talk about because the product sure as hell isn't good enough to get the job done. And that goes just beyond the whole backstage drama piece and talking about interpersonal drama and that as humans we are negative creatures by nature, which we absolutely are, which means that we gravitate to it like flies on horse shit, maggots on a dead body. We love negativity. We love controversy. We love swirl and all that crap. But wrestling makes it a whole lot easier for fans and wrestling media to gravitate towards it because there's not a whole lot of substance there. And even those fans get kind of like weird acting about how much they love wrestling. They will project that they really love wrestling as much as they say they do, but they don't. They don't. It's an act. It's a facade. It's a charade. It is. But goddamn, I look at what happened over the past couple of days as a reflection of this is how sad and pathetic professional wrestling is. Because while wrestler tweeting about intergender wrestling and the response that came from that leading to said wrestler deactivating his Twitter account just speaks to the stupidity of professional wrestling, the lameness of professional wrestling, the lameness of the people involved with professional wrestling, all of that. And what am I talking about here specifically? A couple of days ago, Scotty Too Hotty, yeah, that's Scotty Too Hotty put out a tweet that says, and I'm going to do my best to fully represent what he actually said here. And I quote, dear promoters, I do not fight women. I'm 49 and have a 20 year old daughter. Hurting women isn't appealing to me. I understand that there are men that do it these days. It's just not my thing. If that makes me old or out of touch, I'll take it. Please drop time. Stop trying to book it. Unquote. Okay. One individual's opinion about intergender wrestling, specifically promoters trying to book him in it, and he takes a pass. Seems relatively harmless enough. Like if you look at just like the, the contents of that individual tweet, there are so many more offensive ways that he could have pro approached it and handled it and tackled it than this. Am I wrong? No. And then he also, I think, in a follow-up tweet, you know, acknowledged you know, he had matches 20 years ago with like Linda Miles, China, that he knows what he did. It was a different time, different place. Wasn't a father to a 20 year old daughter. Okay. He's acknowledging what's going to be called out in terms of some of the hypocrisy of what he's saying, but also calling out, you know, hey, that was two shits 20 plus years ago, different time in wrestling business, different time and place in his life. You know, it's like we want people to evolve and change, but only in the way that we want them to evolve and change. And then when they do change, we always try to bring them back to the past and hold them to that standard of 20 plus fucking years ago. For those of you that are older, would you want somebody holding you to this shit of two plus decades ago? Especially if it wasn't that severe? Probably freaking not. But goddamn, the response to some of this Leading to the point where Scotty Tuhati actually deactivated his Twitter account. Now, I'm kind of disappointed in him. And I understand the feeling maybe of, 
I, I, I'm, I'm almost 50 years old. I ain't got time for this childish shit. I just don't care. It's just not that important to me. So I'm going to deactivate it because I don't need this mess. I don't need this noise. I totally get that. But I'm kind of also thinking of, you know, you are in wrestling. You've been involved with wrestling for a long time. Even if you don't do it very much, like, there's still an element here of you would want something to get some buzz around your name. Like, even the old vets when it comes to wrestling have become absolute snowflakes. And that's kind of sad. You could just ignore it, just not respond to it. Just don't look at your interactions. It's not that hard. So yeah, I'm a little fucking disappointed in him. Is he kind of snowflaked on this one? There's absolutely nothing that he said was unreasonable or bigoted or anything like that. But of course, you've got the feminazis and their fucking supporters that are going to sit there and take this to a whole different level that it didn't even need to be fucking taken. And then, of course, when they get called out for it, they're going to tuck tail and run and hide. And here's a tweet. I think it's from at Xenia did that. So hurting men in the premise of a wrestling match is totally okay. But hurting a woman in the same situation is not because why? Because women are weak, fat, fragile flowers. It does make you out of touch. Glad we sorted that out. So a couple of things about this raging stupidity from her. You know, and some of you may look at this as, this as well, you're a, you're a male talking about this, so you're going to have certain biases. Absolutely. She's a female talking about it, so she's going to have biases. Absolutely. But you, you got to look at some, like, common sense factors here. Number one, Scott Garland, Scotty Too Hotty, kind of laid out the differences here for him and talked about a personal preference. Let's look at what he said again. I do not fight women. I'm 49 and have a 20-year-old daughter. So maybe for him, could you grasp the concept that maybe he doesn't like the thought of fighting women that might be around the same age as his fucking daughter and it creates some internal conflict for him and it's just an optic, it's just a feeling he doesn't want to have. What is so fucking wrong about that? Hurting women isn't appealing to him. Your whole shit about because women are weak, fragile flowers. No, that's just you looking for a fucking excuse to go on a freaking rage about something that he's not even pointing to. He just doesn't want to do it. But it's so fucking hard to understand about that. It's just not his thing. If it makes him older out of touch, he'll take it. Please stop trying to book it. He didn't shit on intergender wrestling. He said it's not his thing. You know, what's wrong with saying, it's just not my thing? That doesn't make you a bad person. The fuck is wrong with you? Like when we talk about the differences between the sexes, and I'm not even getting to the gender stuff, so let's not get the transphobes sitting there and, yeah, like, ah, no. When we talk about biological differences between males and females, they are fucking different. Males produce sperm. <laughs> Females produce eggs. They get fertilized. They gestate. That allows them to give birth to a child. That's just one of many physical differences between males and females from a biological standpoint. Women on average tend to have bigger rear ends, bigger chest. Men tend to be Bigger, taller, females tend to live longer. Like this whole notion of because women are weak, fragile flowers. You know, for an industry like professional wrestling that already, already significantly stretches the bounds of credibility and believability and more important, the ability to suspend disbelief. When you look at the indie scene and you've got some five foot two woman going up against this five foot nine hundred eighty pound male and we're presenting these consistently as fair, competitive fights, like at some point in time, it does stretch the bounds of reality. And that's just not males that says, say that, that's females too, men and women. A lot can agree on that. Like if you look at other sports, there is a reason that males and females don't go up against each other at the highest levels. Candace Parker is a fantastic WNBA player. But you put her in the NBA, good luck with that. Two of the fastest females in history were Florence Griffin Joyner 
and Marion Jones. Marion Jones, a caught, admitted drug cheat. Flojo, you gotta be crazy if you think she wasn't too. Because she was beating up all these other drug chicks at the time. But you look at their times from a historical lens in the 100 and the 200. And as great as they were, as elite as they were, as all time as they were, they wouldn't even go to the high school boys level and win a lot of state championships. There'd be a number of states they wouldn't even be the fastest boy in high school. There are freaking differences. Women are more flexible by nature. Like this whole notion of, you know, males and females are 100% equal and can all do the same thing. No, they fucking can't. And we need to stop pretending like they can. And because Scott Garland says he doesn't want to wrestle women, that's not him saying that women are weak, fragile fucking flowers. Maybe that's you saying that you are a weak, fragile fucking flower because you want to make it about something that it's not. Inter intergender wrestling by large is not my jam either. Just not my thing. But frankly, a lot of the wrestling that I see now is not my thing. But if you told me in certain spots and then presented in certain ways, like you look at the Andy Kaufman stuff back in the day, that absolutely made sense. Like that was perfect. If you told me The Miz was trying to be a w the women's wrestling champion or something now, it could work because it's The Miz. If you did that shit with Marco Stunt, I talked about before, like you should make him some sleazy type of heel figure and he should try to wrestle women. It can work. Or if you have somebody like freaking China, obviously that worked. But that was fucking China. Not everybody is goddamn China. And when we talk about what's the problem here, look at the freaking networks. Look at the advertisers. They still treat this shit as not being equal footing. If you even remember when you've had Reginald in WWE, like, and he would try to get involved with women physically, you would notice they would let the women get in the good clean shots, but Reginald had to be creative because he couldn't throw bows. It's a different time. It's a different place. And it's kind of like they're damned if they do and they're damned if they don't. And to sit there and say, well, what's the difference here? Society makes it fucking different and you goddamn good and well know it. When you look at the reaction, typically, consistently, to when a male perpetrates violence against a female versus when a female perpetrates violence against a male, the difference in reactions is night and day. When a guy hits a woman first, it's a fucking problem. And he's scum and he's shit. If a female hits a male first, most people laugh about it and think that shit's funny. That's a key difference. It's not out of touch to say that that's just not my type of jam. It's not my type of thing. Just like it's not out of touch to say that I'm not a big fan of the flippy karate fuck matches of today. Because clearly a lot of other people aren't either. And maybe it's not the people that don't like that shit that are out of touch. It's the people that do that think that it is way more interesting and way more compelling to the larger audience than it actually is. That are the ones that are out of touch. It is really sad that we got to this point where a dude saying that intergender wrestling just isn't for him got to this whole different other level of bullshit. It's so ridiculous, man. He didn't say anything about females being different from males. It just wasn't his thing. And I understand that. And the whole thing, notion of, well, if you're okay with males fighting other males, yes, because we are much more societally programmed to think that it is acceptable behavior. It is not the same. Stop fucking being naive and dumb about this shit, people. It's not the same. Give me a freaking break here. So it's sad that that type of mindset of I'm going to take what he said and make it mean a whole different range of other shit because of my problems and my insecurities versus what he actually did say. Like, that's the shit that happens that gets so annoying. And then the fact that he ran away from it. Dude, that shouldn't have no reason to run away from it. That's kind of sad too. And the fact that this was a topic for a couple of days, the fact that I even felt it was important enough to make a goddamn video about it just speaks to how sad and pathetic wrestling are. Because they are. It's fucking horrible.